Welcome to the Barcelona Podcast, episode 119, Unmissable Opinions, brought to you by the most influential voices in the FC Barcelona community. I'm Dan Hilton, and just for clarification, I'm actually Dan Hilton from the past, as I am away for the holiday this week when the show's coming out. So this was recorded now last week, uh, just so you know for your time. For some talk, though, about Celta de Vigo, the match over the the weekend or the one that's going to happen tomorrow, you can head over to the Patreon for the quick take match review and for any other big news from, we'll say from the future now, you can chat with me on social media. Uh, obviously, I'm still going to be on all of that this week. And we'll give all that info where you can find those different things at the end of the show as usual because it is time for our guest. And as for who our guest is today, it's our friend Navid Molagai, none other than Navid recently back from his trip from Barcelona of 10 days. Now, a lot of our listeners live in Barcelona or do make regular trips to Catalonia, but the thing that makes Navid's trip so special and the reason why we wanted to have him back on to talk about the 11 FC Barcelona-related matches that somehow he saw in 10 days, including eight matches for the Barcelona youth teams. So, Navid, we don't have a La Gran Pagunta today. We don't have a La Ronda today. I just want to ask you, and we'll start by asking before we get to the football aspect of it how your overall trip was uh hey dan hey everybody uh, yeah my trip was pretty amazing i think <laughs> i think it it went uh it went far better than expected and i actually think it was it was more than 11 games actually i always like the first team game at the camp nou espanol two femini games two bar to b games and yeah, it's it's like sixteen or seventeen. Uh, I also cheated a bit because I went to an international uh, under thirteens seven aside cup where they only played games of uh, thirty minutes, and I saw like a handful of those games uh, over two days. But but yeah, just a ton of a ton of football, and yeah, it was it was absolutely fantastic. All right, yeah. So I, I, maybe you cheated a little bit there with the youth tournament, uh, but at least again, plenty of football. That's why you're here to talk about that. And so for the uh, the the outline of this show, we're going to go basically in reverse order of age. We're going to start with the first team, Barca B, then work our way down, if you will, in the age groups um, for obviously all the FC Barcelona related news. So we're not talking about any of the other matches or teams that that you did see but if any of our listeners do want to again ask any questions of those other matches and David saw again you can hit him up on Twitter and you'll find that link just tap on his name in the description in the show notes and we'll plug that again at the end of the show but nevertheless David let's start with the first team now we already talked about the match that you attended however I do want to ask you uh, a question that you want to ask anybody who sees a team in person and, and it's that who looked different to you or who is one of those players that I guess the NBA is a perfect example for this, where you have a guy like uh, a Giannis Antetokounmpo, the, the Greek freak who plays for the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, and if you're not familiar with the NBA, again, you can just Google this. He's just this, this physical athletic anomaly. And he's a guy that you're told he's just different seeing him in person than it is on the TV. The TV just doesn't do what he does justice. And so my question for you for the first team is, was there anybody like that, that, and maybe even besides Messi, that just completely jumps off the field and you go, wow, this guy is even better than I thought he was at first team level? Uh, yeah, I mean, Dembele, he's just a different freak of nature, I think. he He's, he's, he's just different. Uh, he, the way he moves and of course I was pretty lucky to watch the goal it was scored in the end that I was sitting at the at, I mean I was sitting like uh, just behind the goal so it, it was a perfect uh, it was a perfect view and this is Tottenham uh, this is Tottenham you're speaking about right? yeah the Tottenham game yeah, yeah exactly exactly uh, so yeah that was uh, that was pretty special and he's he's I mean everybody I mean I can't speak for everybody else but like I actually expected that I expected the faint shot because I've seen it so many times in television, but still you just, you're just shocked and impressed and somehow surprised as well, even though you actually expected it. So yeah, I went actually absolutely crazy. Uh, and it was a, it was a phenomenal goal. Uh, he didn't have the best of second halves as far as I can remember, but just like the way he moves and the stuff that he, that he just suddenly, like suddenly just does. Uh, they, I mean, it's just, it's just special. I think. Yeah, and the game is always so much faster in person as well. You don't realize just 
how much goes on in the 90 minutes when it seems like it's a slog on on television but in person it just it all kind of happens quickly but uh, again we spend every week talking about the first team and uh Naveed you have so much in your brain that we need to get out about all the other teams well let's go Barcelona B and now for those who follow you on Twitter uh, again it's in the show notes we have to start with a young man he's 19 named Ricky Puj and there's a picture you obviously met Ricky Puj again, but this wasn't a surprise meeting to you at all. Uh, do you just want to give some of the backstory about that? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so some years ago, I started making uh, uh, YouTube videos, and I, I started writing about these young talents in La Masia uh, that, I, that I had been following for some time. Um, and yeah, I started to make videos of them as well. Uh, one of them was this little false nine from one of the cadets, the cadet teams, uh, Ricky Pooch. And um, yeah, one day uh, a guy from his, uh, yeah, so one from uh, Ricky's entourage, uh, his, the cousin of his cousin who, who, had been, who had been watching him since he was like eight or nine, uh, since Ricky was eight or nine. And he, he started writing, he started following me on Twitter and we started uh, just chatting a bit and apparently Ricky was uh, really happy for the videos like he was he was 14 at the time uh, 15 14 15 at the time and so Ricky really appreciated the videos and I appreciated I appreciated his appreciation um, and I continued to make videos of him and continued to writing about him um, and one day in the summer of 2016 uh, Kike uh, wrote <laughs> wrote to me, Navid, uh, what's your address? Uh, so I, I gave him my address, and a few weeks later, uh, a Barca jersey um, arrived in my mail. Uh, a jersey uh, with the um, uh, with the signed by Ricky, uh, where he where he thanked me for 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 all my support, uh, which was pretty huge for me. Like uh, the, the, the play- some of the players had reacted to my videos um, and and the stuff that I wrote. Uh, but not like this. Uh, so I was I was super happy about it, and uh, and I was told that that of course uh, Ricky would really much like like to see me if I ever came to Barcelona. Uh, and time went on, and I continued to make videos of him and write about him, but I never went to Barcelona. Uh, but so yeah, December came, and I decided to go to Barcelona. Um, but now Ricky had begun had begun to get pretty famous. Like he was. He got so so hyped in the summer with the right. preseason uh, in the U.S. Um, and he was getting he was getting very w- uh, well known, especially when I left because it was a week after. Um, it, was, it was actually in the same week as his first team debut at the Camp Nou against Cultural Leonesa in the Cup, where he made this wonderful um, wonderful assist to Denis Suarez. And so I get there, um, and the the second day of my trip. Uh, Barca B played away against Badalona, uh, and I and I go there and I um, I chat to Kike, um, and we uh, we we meet at the stadium. The stadium isn't too big, so I'm, I I easily find Kike and his wife, uh, Marta, who are just the the best of people. Like they they're, they're so nice, so kind, uh, and I um, and I show them uh, a gift that I have for Ricky. Uh, a, a jersey of my uh, first club, um, where I signed it, like thanks to Ricky, like a thanks to Ricky. Um, and they're of course very, very happy. And I meet the rest of his family at the game as well, like just the nicest of people, um, like his mom, his dad, uh, his brother. Um, there were, there were. It's just, it's just such a good. I mean, I, I wouldn't want any like better people around La Masia players. Like I, I really hope that, that other kids also, uh, also ha- have such a, such a good family to, to support them. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so, so the game finishes, Ricky is, is superb. He should have had two or three assists uh, if his, uh, if his attackers were more effective. Um, and we go out to the bus and like, like at least a hundred people are trying to get photos and autographs from Ricky. Uh, who who left the team bus to to go home uh, in his parents' car, uh, and like I'm just standing there, <laughs> like a a bit away from the crowd with my with the gift in my hands, and and Ricky uh, is just busy, uh, like he takes time for everybody. He's just super nice, and 
and of course he's very professional about it. Uh, but then he uh, he gets nearer to the car car and nearer to me, and Kike yells to him, "Hey, Ricky, Navid is here as well." Uh, and Ricky notices me and just gets very happy, uh, like, "Hi, Navid, hey, Navid, hola." And um, and yeah, we talk for a bit, and I I show him the jersey, and he's he's very happy about it. Uh, he appreciates he appreciated it a lot, and yeah, we we took a photo, and he left in the car, and. Uh, yeah, everything went pretty fast. I mumbled yeah. some. I mumbled some. Mm, yeah, not understandable words in Spanish, uh, <laughs> but we, but we, but we did, but we did, uh, we did talk for 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 a moment. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's... And, but but yeah, it was it it was it was just very nice. And afterwards, I, afterwards, I posted it on Twitter, and it kind of blew up. Uh, Ricky, he he responded to me as well. Yeah, it was it was a great experience, and Ricky is just the the best of guys. Like he's he's so calm and he's very he's very grounded, uh, and it's not a surprise either when you meet his family. Uh, they're exactly the same. I, I think that's a real uh, enjoyable thing that people get to hear about this kind of story is that you know so many times when you look at these guys who have this attention and have everybody around them you know pining for their attention and th- they get. You know, it seems like in life things are given to them when they have this maturity and they have this ability to understand uh, humility. That it's always a, a really fills you with those warm and nice fuzzy feelings. Um, so, uh, other than meeting uh, Puj, and he's a player that a lot of people though have been you know watching and aware, are now aware of. And between Puj, Oral Busquets, Iñaki Pena, Chumi, and even uh, we haven't seen much of Musa Wagwe yet. Um, can you just in in those games? Now I know Alex Callado had a, a, a pretty fantastic match as well. Can you just mention some of those players that we don't really think of as being the first team plans, but they kind of surprised you? Um, I would say I would say the new signing Ronald Araujo was pretty was pretty damn good. Uh, he scored a goal against sorry he scored a goal against uh, Badalona, mm-hmm. um, and he's. He's he's kind of he's pretty impressive on TV, but like in the um, in real life, like he's he's super like aggressive, like he's or just he's just so big and so strong, but at the same time fast and good on the ball. Uh, he does uh, he he does need some time to adapt uh, to the game uh, to the to the Barca game. Like there there have been quite a few instances this season where just uh, like just one example like against Levante away uh, Levante Athletic the the B team of Levante away um he uh, he he played the long pass like four or five times and didn't hit his opponent when the Ricky was calling for the ball uh, and the Ricky was really upset about it like he was complaining every single time and telling him that you have to pass it to me like don't play it long um but uh, but yeah, these are these are the things you notice more when you see them live. Um, but yeah, he's a he's a very good player. I think Usawago has has done very well as well. Uh, I mean, you can see that his level is 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 more than just Segunda Bay. Uh, you can obviously see that as well with Ricky. Uh, even now, like he's he's still just 19, but he's just so dominant. Like he's it's not just when he's on the ball either. He 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 directs everybody on the pitch. He's a leader already. You can hear him. You can hear him, especially because he has this very, uh, very uh, high-pitched voice. <laughs> uh, so, like, you can hear him screaming on the pitch and and asking for the ball all the time. And whenever he doesn't get it, like, he he just gets frustrated. Like, he wants it all the time. And and I and uh, and it and it's not any different with the first team. Like in the game at the Camp Nou, like he was he was annoyed when Thamalin, this super experienced, uh, like totally experienced uh center back didn't pass it to him and he was just annoyed with it like he he just wants the ball all the time so he was he was super good um yeah Oriol Busquets obviously also very good Alex Collado uh yeah he has he has some brilliant uh he has some flashes of brilliance as well the team is the team is just super competitive like the average age is 19 uh, and they're just competing against these veterans, uh, yeah. like very rough re- veterans in the Segunda Bay. And I think I was just very impressed seeing them live, I must say. Yeah, that's a big point that we have to note, that even though they're in the third division, uh, the, the players they're playing against might not have the same skill that even that they do, being 
sometimes 10, 12 years younger, but yet they, it's a lot more physical and just adapting to that is a thing that, uh, you know, as teenagers, they just don't have that part of their game. But again, we do talk about Barca B sometimes, and a, a lot of those players are a little more well-known. So we're going to skip ahead, or by skip ahead, I mean skip down the ladder. You also saw the human, the Juvenil A squad on two occasions. So we'll start with three names and the three guys that have been making the Barcelona B bench recently, that being Alejandra Marquez, the the forward, Conrad De La Fuente, the American winger, and Jandro Oriana have been making, all three of them, as my maid mentioned, have been making the Barcelona B bench. So we're going to start with those three, uh, and then we'll move on to some of the other names as well. So uh, those three being the big ones, what have you seen about their development in the, the fall that has uh, you know, garnered them getting calls up to the B team? Yeah, so Alejandro Marquez, uh, a, a Venezuelan striker, uh, they signed him last season for Juvenil B, actually. Uh, but he was so good that he played with Juvenil A regularly, and he became an instant profile, actually, on the team. Uh, he was very important in the uh, UEFA Youth League success. Um, scored, was it one or two? It was I think two goals. It was two goals, yeah, was two in, goals in, in the final. final yeah, exactly. Abo, yeah, Abo Ruiz added a third, yeah. And, and the yeah, interesting exactly. thing is Marquez was the center forward, and Abel Ruiz yeah. was even the one pushed out to the wings for the UEFA League last year. That's right. Yeah, exactly. And he, he's been having a pretty difficult fall, actually. He's been injured for, like, on and off injured just all the time. Um, but he's getting he's getting his fitness back uh, to normal now and playing regularly for the Juvenil A. He scored a hat-trick the other day against a pretty bad opponent. But anyways, uh, he scored a hat-trick nonetheless. Um, and he's just the, the number one Barca B uh, Juvenil back up if you can say so like uh, uh, at this time Abel Ruiz is injured so Alejandro Marquez gets the call up and frankly Barca B they need to score more goals uh, their nines have not scored so many this season that being uh, Rafa Mujica and Abel Ruiz uh, they they contribute with uh, a lot of other things like Rafa Mujica is just he's just running all the time like he never stops running and that's of course very good to have when you're pressuring your opponents and Abel Ruiz is very good in the build up he's had some assists as well um but but yeah they need goals as well uh, Alejandro Marquez he's a he's a he's a very classic nine he uh he plays with his back towards the goal and is always searching for the ball in the box um but he's good with his feet he's pretty fast as well a uh, decent player um, yeah, Conrad de la Fuente, uh, both the right winger and the left winger, but mostly playing on the right. American, um, he he likes to try to to use his left foot as well. He's a right footed he's a right footed player, uh, but he uses his left as well. Uh, he's not one hundred percent natural with his left yet. I think it's it it looks like he's still training with his left foot uh, a lot to make it better. Um, still a part of the formative process, of course. Um, but yeah, he, he's pretty good. Um, he sometimes he's a bit anonymous in the games. Uh, I saw, um, I saw as he he played in both the games. I saw one against Manacor and one against Tottenham, uh, and he he only had one good half actually in those two games. I th- I thought, mm-hmm. um, but would, but when he does play well, like no one can really handle him. Uh, he's just all over the defenders and constantly. Um, constantly challenging them um but if i if i have had to choose between him and ansumani fati the other winger from juvenil a uh, I, w- I think i prefer ansu uh, he's also two years younger um but Conrad is a, is a is a good is a good talent and i, and I think that he uh, he will get more playing time with barca b next season uh, hopefully he can get some appearances this season but he's um, he's definitely going to be playing with them regularly uh, from next season and onwards. I think Yandro Rayana is, yeah, he's uh, like we've we've seen so many of these kinds of midfielders, and it's kind of amazing that La Masia just keep producing them. Um, but he's this he's this controlling midfielder who, I mean, he can play as a pivote, but also as a as an attacking midfielder interior. Um, and yeah, he he just controls the game. He's very smart. Uh, always plays the right passes. He makes these fantastic diagonal passes uh, once in a while. Um, and yeah, just an overall great player. I saw him as well outside the the Badalona Stadium uh, before Ricky came out. I, I went over to him and had a talk with him and, and got a picture as well. Uh, he's a he's a good kid. Uh, very calm as well. Um, yeah, I hope. 
I, I would expect him to get regular playing time with Barca B next season when I think Oriol Busquets will will be more around with the first team. Um but but yeah he's a he's a he's definitely a, a very interesting player, Yandro Oriana. So some of the other names I want to throw your way, uh, again, you don't have to go through each and every one, just some of the ones that popped out to you. We have, there's an attacking midfielder in Nico Gonzalez. He's also in the picture. Uh, Niels Mortimer is a winger, a Spanish winger, 17 years old. There's a center back, Arnel Comas. Uh, so I'm just going to give you those three, but also want to throw out any other players jumped out to you or, or were much even better than you expected uh, that aren't as highly touted as, again, all the names that I've already mentioned. Uh, I like Ansu Manifati, I, I mentioned him before. He's he's definitely one of my favorites. Uh, mm-hmm. He scored a brilliant goal against Manakor uh, when I was there. Uh, the day I arrived in the city, I went to watch him play, and he scored a he scored a very nice goal. He's a very um, like he he does things on his own. Um, like he he takes the ball and takes on players and and just goes for it. Uh, he's he's a very hybrid player, like hybrid attacking player. Like he. He's a winger, but he can also play as, a, as an outright number nine. Uh, when he was younger, he, he even played in midfield as well. Um, he's a super fun player, and he just turned 16. Like he's and he's a, he's a he's a top scorer of, of the of the under 19s right now at Barca. I mean, it's it's super impressive. I can only encourage people to watch his game, his uh, his goal against PSV, um, the PSV under 19s in the in the youth league, like. He just takes the ball from uh, from the center of the pitch, like goes past two, three players, and just hits it in the top corner. Uh, he's he's super talented. I think if he if he works really really hard and stays away from injuries, I think he can become so dangerous in in some years. Like he he's super promising. Um, I really like I really like Nico Gonzalez as well. Uh, the midfielder Barca were were very very lucky for him to. Were, they were really lucky that he stayed. In the summer, he was pretty close to joining Manchester United. Um, but yeah, he's another controlling midfielder. He's he's playing above his... Uh, I mean, he's just 16 as well. Uh, so he should be playing with the Juvenil B. Uh, so this is his first season with the Juvenil A, skipping Juvenil B. Um, and he's... Sometimes he's he has a he has a bit of a difficult time. Uh, for example, against Tottenham, uh, he was taking off in the half. Um, but... But yeah, he's uh, he's 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 so good on the ball. Like he's a very aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing player to watch. Uh, very very good on the ball. Um, another player uh, who's who's also surprised. Like these are just the youngest players I'm mentioning, but they're they're so talented. Mm-hmm. Uh, Elish Moriba, uh, who who got pretty famous in the summer when he scored like three amazing goals against Real Madrid. In a youth tournament, uh, including one from the like two long shots and one shot from the halfway line, yeah, hitting the bar and in, it was pretty like just ridiculous. I mean, his his main trade is long shots, and he's he's pretty fun to watch. Oh, and, and Moriba, uh, actually, the storyline, if I'm not mistaken, Evita, is that being 15 years old, he's going to turn 16 in January in just about two and a half weeks' time, and Man City is pushing hard for his signature. And you look, and being only 15, he's getting called up to the UEFA Youth League matches. He's getting called up uh, to uh, even, it's the Juvenile Bay. And he's a guy that should that is younger than so many players, even on the Cadet A squad. And, and so it seems like Barcelona are pushing him harder than almost any guy in the youth academy right now in terms of playing up levels. Yeah, and I think that's like part of the strategy to get him to stay at the club by yeah. showing a lot of confidence in him. And he's 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 taken that confidence and. And taking advantage of it, uh, really. I mean, he's been he's been the Juvenile. Uh, there was even a period where he he started for them like regularly. Um, uh, he he did have a he did have a short injury for a couple of weeks, but he he's back now and and again playing for the Juvenile. Um, and yeah, the there was some like there was some really worrying news about him already accepting an offer from from Manchester City in the summer. Uh, but right now, it's actually. Um, it looks like it looks like he's he's closer to staying at Barca, mm-hmm. um, but but there but yeah his contract is running out when he turns sixteen and he hasn't renewed with Barca yet. Uh, Manchester City are definitely in pole position to get him if he doesn't want to renew with Barca. Right. Uh, apparently Barca are um, they they have this one last offer for him uh, and. 
and I hope it's a good offer. Uh, yeah. Because uh, because yeah, it's it's worth keeping him if he turns out to be. I mean, he's been compared to Pogba. I can see the compar- uh, the compar- the comparisons, and in any case. Uh, in any case, it's it's much cheaper to to give him a good contract offer and uh, and developing our own Pogba instead of signing a Pogba. Yeah, uh, I, I really hope he stays. But if he does leave, I think it's a good decision for him as well because he uh, stylistically he he fits the Premier League uh, as well for the long term. I think. Yeah, I mean he's a he's a one of those fantastic players to look uh and he isn't just highlights and he has been just so consistent with playing up levels. And he's a perfect transition. Uh you did see Hubinel Bay once as we will keep this moving and they've got some names to throw at uh and some of the updates on some of the guys we've talked about earlier in Juan Mayardi, uh Alex Rico, uh, we already mentioned Moriba, Brian Peña, who came over from Espanyol over the summer, Diego Lopez, who came over from Real Madrid over the summer, and Mark Domen- Domenech. And of that list of players, uh, who do you think has taken the biggest strides uh, in this first half of the season? And again, if there's anybody I missed, too, just throw those names out as well. I think the biggest star of Juvenil B is actually their coach, uh, Fran Artiga. Oh, wonderful. I, I absolutely adore him. He's my favorite La Masia coach. Uh, and he just makes his teams play brilliantly every single season, like no matter which team he's he's managing. Um, and the thing about this Juvenil B team is that they don't have any specific like stars. Uh, they're just an, an extremely well uh, uh, well drilled squad, uh, and uh, they just they just function function so well with each other. They're leading they're leading their uh, their the league. I mean they. They should have had a lot more players this season, but frankly, so many players have left in the past uh, in the past year year or two uh, that they uh, that they got a, a bit of a weaker squad. The same goes for Juvenil A, actually. Um, but uh, but yeah, Juvenil B have uh, I mean yeah, just going through some of their profiles. Um, yeah, the striker Jaume Jardi definitely. Uh, he he's the he's their top scorer, the left-footed. He can play uh, in all three positions in attack. Uh, I saw him play both for Juvenil A and then for Juvenil B this in uh, in the trip that I went to, and he scored uh, an important goal for Juvenil uh, B against uh, Oya Escola Mataro, um, a game that they won two one. The other goal scorer was Raúl Moro, uh, a pretty interesting winger. As well, uh, they Barca signed him from Espanyol last season. Uh, left uh, left winger, uh, extremely fast, like really fast, actually. Um, yeah, another player they signed from Espanyol, Brian Peña. Uh, he's been very good. Uh, he he has he maybe has the same. He's been compared to Philippe Coutinho, um, hmm. just because I would say just because he he's. Uh, positionally, he's he's exactly the same. Like he's a ten, so Barca don't really know if they should play him at left wing or center of or left central midfield. And he's, I mean, really, he's so good in both. Uh, he's been playing good at both, but they don't really know which position they should like strategically play him in, or or which position he would become best in long term. But he's just playing very well, no matter where he plays, uh, scoring goals and creating chances. Um, oh yeah, their their pivote on the team is super good. Alex Rico, uh, again, like the midfielders that Barca produce, it's 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 nothing but impressive. Like it's it's just it's it's kind of mind blowing how like every single bracket you can just mention two midfielders that that La Masia are producing that are just on another level, um, and they they seem similar because. Their traits are much the same, and they are they are taught in many of the same things. I mean, in the same things from year to year, uh, but still, they're they're so different. Like I think Alex Zico, he's he's very simple. Like he he just controls the play. I mean, it's it's yeah, it's become a cliche now because of the the documentary and all that. But like, take the ball, pass the ball, like all the time. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's that kind of midfielder. They have a very good central back, center back. I think uh, Gerard Hernandez. Yeah, you're, he's a he's a PK type of midfielder, lanky, uh, but still pretty fast and very good on the ball. Um, oh yeah, their 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 goalkeeper has been insane this season, Ramon Villa. Uh, he looks to be developing uh, very well. Yeah, 
a great team, uh, but but not but not a team filled with stars. For example, uh, I mean, Kadade is a team filled with high profiles. Well, and you uh, took, you took the, the yeah, you took the name yeah. the words right out of my mouth. We were we were yeah. moving right there. You said two midfielders for Juvenil Bay, and yet we've already got uh, f- uh, from the Cadet A squad. Who, while well, you didn't see, they've been kind of the one where everyone's had their eye on them in terms of just this generation of talent. Uh, just in the midfield, you have uh, some updates on Jorge Alastue. Mark Casado, Shus Alba, Xavi Simone's a name that everyone knows. But again, as we've always talked about, for this Cadet A A squad, you should know so many of these names. Uh, Simone's is on the same level as so many of these other guys. Fermin Lopez, the winger, Leo Dos Reyes, the center forward, the left back, Alejandro Alex Balde, uh, as well as David Navarro is also a Spain youth international, uh, and the center back, Diego Almeida. Now, I've thrown a whole list of names at you, but... That's because all the names that I've mentioned, Navid, and we talked about, and I've spent now the fall really, really diving deep into these guys. Each of them is talented in their own right. And this is just a, a generational class of what the, this list of players is is able to do. Um, so of what you've seen of the Cadet Oz, uh, of all those names, again, uh, we keep going back to that each level, but who of that bunch, of this very talented group have kind of almost taken another leap forward in the fall and have turned out to be leaders of this cadet a squad. <laughs> I mean, the cadet, they, they're just scary. Uh, like it's, it's absolutely, it's just insane how many good players are in this team. And, and yeah, I mean, and it's also insane how Carlos Martinez, the coach, also one of my absolute favorites, just it, somehow manages to play them all. Like they have five extremely good midfielders. Uh, they, yeah, the, you mentioned them: Jorge Alastue, Xavi Simons, Mar Casado, Chus Alba, and Fermin Lopez. But he just manages to play them all still. Uh, Fermin Lopez is yeah, he's played at left wing, but in reality he just roams everywhere. Uh, like has this free role uh, lane between the lines. He's also and, the yeah, he's uh, also the tiniest fifteen year old yeah. you've ever seen. And so yeah. he's he's got a little bit of physicality to work on, but if his body yeah. does grow, the things that he can do with his feet and his low center of gravity are pretty fantastic. Yeah, he reminds me of Ricky actually when he was when he was in the same age. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I mean, just an absolute plague for the defenders. Absolutely a pr- plague. I mean, he's you can't control him. Um, but but yeah, so many midfielders. Jorge Alastue, uh, the creative attacking midfielder of the team, the captain as well. Um, he he's he's the midfielder who is uh, like like if Juvenil Bay would would need a midfielder they would take him um, they would they would pick him first at the moment uh, physically he's also developing pretty nicely um, Mar Casado he's the defensive midfielder a, a very simple uh, like he 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 plays a simple game uh, doesn't he doesn't try to do many different like skills and stuff like that he. He, yeah, he, he gets the ball and, and gives it away quickly uh, without any trouble. Very solid uh, ball distributing midfielder. Chus Alba, they just signed him from Espanyol this summer. Uh, also an attacking left central midfielder. Um, very good. Jorge Alastue, by the way, is left-footed. Uh, he, he, he's somewhat comparable with Alenia, actually. They're pretty similar. Uh, but yeah, he has a very good left foot. Chus Alba is right, right-footed. And of course, uh, the one that everybody knows, Xavi Simons. Um, yeah, Xavi Simons is, I mean, you can't talk about him without, you know, thinking about the millions of followers that he has and the millions of views every single video of him gets. Um, and he's a, he's a super good talent. He's a, he's a very, very good player, but not the player that I think most would expect him to be uh, because... Uh, I mean, people see some clips of him f- from when he was 12, 13, um, when he was playing seven-a-side uh, seven football and when he his game hadn't been developed as much as, as it is now. And, like, I would just like to say that he's uh, he's he's the type of midfielder that that just plays the simple game. He runs so, so, so much for the team. Um, a commentator, Barca TV commentator, ca- called him, like, the, the 12th, lung of the team i mean he ha- or something like he has 12 lungs or something and that's I, I would say it's pretty true like he just runs so so much and and he he 
he he gets the ball and and passes it on and plays a simple game. Uh, he uh, yeah, he's very good with Mar Casado. Uh, actually, they're they're kind of com- competing with each other. Uh, but while Mar Casado is not really a central midfielder as well as being a defensive midfielder, Xavi Simons can play both positions. So um, be, it's, it's kind of lighthearted, but it seems like of all the things that we've heard of Xavi Simons, if you're going to, it sounds to me, profiles of games, if you have the audacity to compare Xavi Simons more to Rakitic than to Xavi Hernandez, it sounds like you might burn Barcelona Twitter to the ground, Navid. This is... <laughs> <laughs> but then, but this is in jest, obviously. But yeah, it is. It is. It is very interesting that again, everyone might just know that name because of what he's always been kind of hyped up to be. Um, but yeah. that these players do develop, and and over time they change. And especially, uh, Simone's had a, a wrist injury earlier in the season, or an arm injury earlier in the season. He missed a few weeks, and I was I was noticing that he really did have to fight his way back into that squad that is yeah. how deep that that squad is that that yeah. a, a, even a name like that he no spot is guaranteed yeah and 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 he did fight his way back to the squad and, and he is playing regularly now uh he he broke his hand uh and and yeah had to had to get back into the squad and it's not as easy as as one might think it's actually extremely hard but also massive props to um to Carlos Martinez, who is just able to play them all all the time, and and they're they're developing very nicely. And Xavi Simons is actually developing very nicely physically as well. Uh, there was a there were there were some worries when he was younger that he was so small, uh, but he's actually developing very nicely. He's 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 like in this age of puberty right now, where he's like his voice is just uh, his voice is is not so attractive. Uh, like he's. He's uh, he's developing uh, as as <laughs> right. any kid in puberty right. would do at the moment, and he's he's very good. Um, uh, of course, uh, I mean, of course, the problem with all these uh, cadet A players is that they will, I mean, they will all be they will all be offered some very nice contracts yeah. uh, from from other clubs. So we'll see. I really hope that all of them stay, uh, but like they also have probably the best left back in La Masia for me, uh, Alejandro Balde. Mm-hmm. Uh, who is lightning fast and also very good physically and technically. Um, who I mean, yeah, this is, they have the, for me they have the two best centre backs in La Masia, uh, David Navarro and Diego Almeida. Yep. Diego Almeida being a year younger than than the rest. I mean, they're both Spain youth internationals. Diego Almeida with the under 16s and and David Navarro with the under 17s. Uh, their their striker is just a tank, uh, Leo Dos Reis, uh, like this very unorthodox Barca striker. He's just so lanky and not very fast, but he just scores all the time. Uh, they have a right, very good right winger as well, Mamadou Saidou Ba. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, they have some very good other wingers as well. Arnau Sola, I think, is a very good right winger or left winger. I mean, he's a left. He's left footed and. And the thing about the thing that I love about this team is how much uh, the coach Carlos Martinez experiments. For example, Arnau Sola, uh, I saw him play at left centre back once. Uh, like he's a winger, uh, like right winger, <laughs> left winger, uh, yeah. and he was playing in midfield and at left centre back in a three back formation. It's a super funny team, and I'm and I'm so sad that I didn't get to see them. They were playing in Girona away, and it was it was too long a trip for me. Yeah, but I I really want to see them. I mean they're. <laughs> they're just insane. Definitely the best player for player. Definitely the best La Masia team this season. Well, you did see the Cadet Bays once. You saw the Alavine A twice, and you saw the Alavine C and the Infantile Bay as well. Um, so from that list, the Cadet Bays I want to throw out there, Pablo Paez, Tony Caravaca, Adria Cabdavadilla. And uh, the point there, all three of those being center midfielders, all three of those being the names that kind of jump off the page to you from the Cadet Bays. And then for the Alavine A squad, um, Shane Cloyvert, of course, who is the son of Patrick Cloyvert, former Barcelona and uh, striker and Dutch international. Uh, those are uh, poor Shane Cloyvert is, is a similar vein where because he is a son of uh, a former talent, he's the one that unfortunately gets this unneeded uh, attention. Um, but I, I think the question being, though, all of these guys are wingers and attacking players uh, for La Masia of what you see at those levels. Do you find that um, I guess I guess how to say 
The question I'd have, even in connection with the video that came, it, it, not that went viral, but there was a one, I think it was a, the, the, the pre-Benjamins the other day, that of, of them doing a, a Ronda. And their Ronda looked better than most Rondas of 16 to 18-year-olds at other levels. Um, and yet you have, you have under 10 kids doing a Ronda at just an incredible speed. So of yeah. these midfielders at, at Barcelona, and even of the names that I've already mentioned, um, what are you seeing from these different kids uh, that, that winds up being unique? Or is it just, again, a lot of little bodies kicking balls in similar ways? And it's more about, again, the style than it is more about these individual players showing individual things. Yeah, I just think that like the current generations of midfield talents in La Masia, I think it's just a culmination of just years and years and years of right coaching and right methodology uh, for these players and in this system. And it just, it's just, it just works. Like there's just no way around it. It it just is. It works and it works extremely well. Um, and that's why all clubs are copying Barca. I mean, it's, it's as simple as that. And yeah, the, the, the Benjamin A's, uh, yeah, they're on the 11s and they're, they're so good as well. Um, uh, currently on the 10s, um, they'll, they'll turn 10 later this year, um, but they, later this season, but like, yeah, they have, yeah, I don't, I don't want to hype up like nine year olds, but they have, uh, they have some extremely good players. I mean, uh, they have one very special kid, uh, Michal Zuk. Um, I've I've heard that he is very highly rated at the club, and when you see them him play, he's yeah he's 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 something else. And I mean, it's it's weird to talk about nine year olds, of course. Um, yeah. But we have to we have to consider we have to we have to realize the fact that these kids are in their minds they're professionals. Like you can't change that. Uh, they want to have fun and all that. And their kids, but like in their minds, they are the biggest professionals out there, and and they fight for tooth and nail for every single thing in every single game because their competition is so 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 hard. Uh, like every single summer, a bunch of them will have to leave the club, and new uh, kids will will join, and it's a it's a tough 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 competition for them. Um, but but yeah, the Benjamin A that 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 video, it's. It's just a simple rondo. I mean, I think the guy who who filmed filmed it was just at the the training facilities, and he just went on and filmed the, filmed them during a normal exercise, during a normal training session. I mean, I think you can find that at every single at every single uh, training session in uh, in La Masia. Um, but yeah. but yeah, the so going back to the cadets, um, the cadet, I watched them; they, they were super good. By the the cadet. It's the under 17s level, uh, if I didn't mention it before. So the cadet A is the under 17s A, but in reality, it's just the the cadet B is always the younger under 17s. So basically, the under 16s. So the cadet A is currently the 2003 generation, while the cadet B is the 2004 generation, uh, and the cadet B also have a have have a very good team. Uh, their coach Sergi Mila is good. It's very very good. They just won a very prestigious tournament in in uh, in Bavaria uh, in Germany, a, a famous indoor tournament, seven now five aside indoor tournament, uh, which was which was very fun to see. Barca had two teams in that tournament, and the one team one team was beaten by Bayern Munich in the semi final, and the other team beat Bayern Munich in the final uh, so dominance from Barca um, yeah uh, Pablo Paez Gavi is definitely the, the 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 most fun player to watch on the team two-footed small uh, attacking midfielder uh, yeah he's a gem definitely a gem um, they have uh, they have a defensive midfielder who has scored something like eight goals this season or something it's it's ridiculous BL Vicens he's worth uh, remembering Tony Caravaca, he can play everywhere. He also played nine the game that I watched him. Their attacker, their number nine, Xavi Planas is Ch- Xavi Planas is um, is also a very good. Uh, le- the left back Juan Larios, uh, Spain international, youth international. Uh, yeah, uh, great team. Uh, yeah. I oh I like their goalkeeper a lot. Uh, Ander uh, Andre Ander Astralaga. Uh, he's he's bad. They signed him from Athletic Bilbao this summer. Uh, I think he he looks very. I'm, I mean, 
he looks like a, I mean, he's already pretty lanky. Um, I, I would expect him to become a pretty good goalkeeper uh, when he gets older. And we want to remind you too, again, this is our end of the show disclaimer as we kind of wrap this one up, Naveed, uh, that, uh, you know, we, uh, we want to give attention on this show. And especially if you follow Naveed on Twitter, you follow the La Masia, the Young Kool-Aid's account on Twitter. Um, while we always put the disclaimer on that these are just teenagers, these are just kids, uh, a lot of them, and I mean, the greatest majority of them won't wind up being in the first team. Um, but for Barcelona, as they've proven in La Masia, as Naveed made mention, they already have the mentality of professionals, and a lot of these players go on to be professional footballers. So the attention we give them, we're not telling you that they're going to be the, the next... There is no next Iniesta. There is no next Messi. There is no next Gerard Piquet. Now, if you compare a guy like Diego Almeida to Gerard Piquet, it's because he does have certain qualities. And it just those kind of comparisons help you understand at a, at a smaller level, at a developmental level, uh, some of the attributes uh, some of the attributes individually of these players. So I just want to make the, that, that yeah. all that very clear that, again, we're not yeah. telling these are future superstars at, at ca- the camp, no, but these are certainly promising kids, and there's a reason why La Masia is being uh, replicated or trying to be replicated all over the world. It's because that they, they found a way to culminate some of the best talents of of. of you know, not only just players in Spain, but they have a system and a system that is proven to, to work. So when we do talk about these players, again, yeah. we're not trying to overhype them like a Xavi Simones, but we are telling you that, that there are so many talented players and we do want to give attention. And we almost, you know, Naveed, maybe you'll agree with this, that we do want to provide hope that, that even though there are La Masia talents leaving, even though you don't see them breaking into the first team, there are so many talented players at the youth levels, and there are so many that have the ability to reach that potential of the first team. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I definitely agree with you, Dan. Uh, and and I mean, there's also a reason why uh, every single year when the when the best talents turn 16 in La Masia and they have to renew their contracts with the club, like all the top clubs in Europe, they want them. I mean, even the even the lesser good players in La Masia, like they want them. For example, Hector Bellerin who's now uh, very good at Arsenal, like he was a bench player for, in La Masia. Uh, he was a bench right winger uh, and Arsenal wanted him. They saw something in him and they saw something uh, they, they saw right. Um, but but like they, I mean, Barca are just, they were just incredible at developing talent. There's just no way around it. Uh, can I just talk quickly about the Alevin A's as well? Oh, of course. Uh, yeah, I, I went to uh, the Media Gold Cup in, in, in Cornea outside of Barcelona, uh, a three-day international seven-a-side uh, tournament uh, where Alevine, they ended up be, becoming champions, beating Real Madrid in the final in a mini Clasico uh, on penalty shootout. Uh, it was just, it was a great experience. Like, it, it, the, the stadium was filled with, with spectators. It was, it was pretty fun to watch. Uh, the atmosphere was great. Uh, and the uh, yeah, and the pressure on the kids was also pretty great. And the thing you say with the oh, he's the next so and so and so on. Um, I mean, this happens in real life as well. I mean, I was in the final against Madrid. I was sitting next to some next to some Barca fans, and one of the Madrid players, the best the best player actually, was a midfield ten, and he had long hair, uh, and it was playing very nicely. And so, of course, I hear people around him say, "Hey, Modric, Modric." I mean, and I mean, I, I think it's just a natural yeah. uh, reflex, fan reflex, that people just compare uh, the kids with with the players that they actually know. Um, but but yeah, the Barca team they became champions. They you mentioned Shane Clivert, uh, he's a he's a striker on the team. I mean, they can only play with one striker, and they have Shane Clivert and frankly, the best player on the pitch on the team, Lamin Yamal. Uh, who is just absolutely brilliant? He scored a he scored a very nice goal and and even great even better assist in the final had a better assist in the final. Uh, other players, uh, uh, their captain David Saith um, looked nice, and they had they they have this like very tall but extremely elegant centre back, and he even played left winger as well in the tournament. Uh, Landre Fare. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I just loved watching the team um, because they play with so much intensity. Like they're they're eleven, uh, but like the intensity they have, the the level, the overall level that they play. Like also all the other teams as well. I watched the Ajax team as well against uh, 
against Sevilla, that was a great game. Uh, the, the PSG play as well, so very good. Um, even like the local boys from Cornea were super good. Uh, they 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 lost the semifinals to Madrid. Um, but but yeah, it was it was a great experience and and also props to uh, the Barca coach uh, Marc Serra, who is just an absolute legend at the club at this point. He uh, he's always been a football seven coach uh, at the club, uh, at least as far as I can remember. And uh, and yeah, I met him after the game and had a good chat with him. Uh, such a nice guy uh, and so important for the. Uh, for the academy, actually, and and yeah, the team was the great, great, and it was a great experience. Yeah, it's wonderful to hear. We're we're so glad you were able to come on and join the show. Uh, and, and again, where can people find uh, not only the tales of your vacation, but uh, as you continue to keep us updated on all that stuff, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me on on Twitter on uh, Navid Jan. Uh, I mean N A V I D J A A A N. Uh, I'm yeah I'm mostly on Twitter. I also do some videos on YouTube once in a while, but not so much anymore. So just just Twitter. Uh, people can find me in there. You can also tap in your app, click on his name in the show notes, and it'll take you right to his Twitter. You can also use the show notes to subscribe to our show. You can find us on social media at on Twitter at the Barcelona Pod or at Hilton D13 for me on Instagram at the Barcelona Pod. And you might notice on Instagram as well as on the website barcelablog.com that we uh, from our website have been doing uh, these La Masia profiles. So a, a number of the names that you heard uh, on this show, we have our profiles there. And again, just filling in everything else, there's the at Young Kool-Aid's account on Twitter. You follow Naveed personally. He has so much good stuff there. He's been willing to interact uh, as I kind of do give a plug for Naveed here at the end. He interacts with everybody. He has s- s- such a wealth of knowledge that, again, you've been if you've been here for the whole time, for this whole hour, not only do we thank you, but this is only the tip of the iceberg. That if you want more of this stuff, again, Naveed, that we just we just hit again just the the the, the slimmest tip uh, of all the things that he has in his head. So again, you can head over on Twitter to talk to him. Head over to our website uh, to check out Lamasia profiles as well. And for the regular shows, our closed Facebook group tvpod.link backslash group it's a fun place deeper dive discussions and even though we didn't have any questions from them from LaRonda today they continue multiple times a day to have these discussions about the different things happening in the club including the recent arrival of Jason Mario and anything else happening in the January window trust me it is in there they are talking about it and the final thing is again we didn't talk about any of the first team really today other than that first few minutes there but we are doing now quick take match reviews on our Patreon uh, it's as low as $3 to subscribe to that and you can get those quick takes match reviews coming out uh one the most recent one obviously just came out after the celta de vigo match once you have this in your ears that's tvpod.link backslash patreon so naveed thanks so much for joining the show thanks to you for listening to the barcelona podcast until next time we'll talk to you soon force of barca and most importantly happy holidays <laughs>